you going? Gary from Platform One MRC. Glad you can join me again. Well, as you can see from that opening shot, this uh, little scene here of Hutchison fabrication has been completed. It's a nice little, uh, nice little scene, I think, anyway. And uh, from some of the feedback I've received on some of the Facebook groups, HO scale shelf modelers, micro and small model railroad layouts, and Platform One MRC, and a bunch of others that I've posted, including the NMRA uh, Facebook groups. Um, yeah, a lot of people think I've done well with this, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out. As you're aware from my previous video, all this is made from card. From the roadway surface here, the driveway, and the building itself. Now, if you recall, the building is made from 3mm grey board or book binding board. The driveway and the roadway Oh, actually, the driveway is made from uh, one millimeter card. The roadway is the white uh, foam core that I had down, and I've actually painted over or splayed over a layer of uh, the uh, golden fiber paste or fiber gel. And you can actually hear it's got a bit of a rough texture when I rub my finger over it, which actually, uh, you know, most most roads in these industrial areas are a little bit broken up and what have you and you know starting to degrade a little bit from the heavy traffic that they get. The detailing I've done here and I will show an aerial shot is to get the effect that I've achieved here on the hard stand or the driveway there is by basically painting with cheap acrylics. Now I just use those you know the cheap two dollar store acrylics, nothing, nothing major, um, no, no, no expense spared, and uh, it depends which way you paint it. I, I generally paint one direction first, then paint in another direction. I will say that some of the grooves that you can, you may be able to see a few expansion joints in the actual uh, concrete surface here. Um, I do go in with a darker colour first and uh, highlight that, then go over with the uh, acrylics on top. Uh, as I said. Paint one way first, and then paint the other. Then on the third coat, paint back the original direction again, and it gives you that uh, sort of rough texture that concrete wears to. A little bit of dry brushing has been applied over the top, which is the darker grey black. You know where the vehicles are coming and out of the the scene. Now I'm just going to move the boat, which belongs to the business owner, and you can see I've added you know these small loads here fabricated loads which are on skids there is more behind the truck uh, over the back corner here actually on top of the truck here some fabricated stairs which have been uh, strapped down nice and tight and some hand railing I'll uh, turn that around so you can see it so you can see the handrail and the stairs there and uh, that's coming out of one of the uh, either Grant line or Titchy I think I think Titchy train group box of spare parts and all that so uh yeah those boxes are great for adding little detail items such as such as this and over the back there behind the truck you can see here i've got a uh a length of fencing and another small set of stairs over here which is sitting on a skid or a pallet as we call it you can also see in the foreground here here and i'll just move the van out of the way oil stains from where the vehicles are parked and where the boat sat um, that just adds, adds to the character of the whole scene the fencing here is scratch built from evergreen styrene I have done a video on this previously and uh, the posts here are evergreen styrene number 220 which is 0.88 millimeter diameter and the rails are evergreen styrene number 219 that's all pieced together on a little jig that I've drawn up. Just just on a piece of plywood, I, I drew it up, you know, drew the post uh, down, which is separated around about the 10 feet mark. Uh, and the rails are about six feet, six scale feet apart. And they've just uh, tacked in with a little bit of CA. So take the post down uh, in position, glue the rails down over the top. And once that's set, the uh, tulle or wedding veil is glued to that. Now your normal MEK 
glues, modelling glues, won't adhere to the uh, the veil or the the tulle. Um, I use CA, and how I how I do this is I use a thin pin or a piece of styrene, and I actually just dab a bit of PVA. Oh, sorry, CA across the top rail first, apply the tulle, and I let that go off. I do this while it's down on the board. Then, once that's cured, I pull the tulle tight, and then I do the same along the bottom and hold it all in place away from the uh, bottom rail with a bit of a uh, painter's tape, you know, just sort of sticky tape. Um, when it's complete, I just go through and trim it all up. I do leave, leave a few barbs sitting above the rail, as you'd expect from any chain wire link. And that's how I do that. The gates, same again. Um, the only difference there is if you've got a cross brace, and they're not quite as, as big as the fence panels. I think I've scaled them down to about 9 feet thereabouts. So you've got an 18 foot opening between these two, two fences here, which is plenty. I still want to add a couple of more details to the building itself, um, namely a couple of mini prints air conditioners, or one, of, one at least, which I'll either you know put above this sign here on the wall. Um, I've just got to paint that up, detail it, whatever, and uh, add a couple of conduits, and and it'll be going into place. But this scene is pretty much complete. You can see in the back between the fence here and ferrous processing that I'll have uh, thickened that up as as an alleyway. Um, I do see quite a bit of that from looking at uh, Google Maps of the Miami area where it's just a bit of rack and ruin area. So I've just filled that in with 12 mil static grass, 4 mil static grass, 2 mil static grass and then added the, uh, the shrub scrub on top. Now these shrub here and this one at the front here, now that's made from sizal rope. Uh, if you watch Boomer Dioramas or My Mate Gormo on Great Chest of a Junction, he shows you how to make them. It's basically take a length of sizal rope. Uh, I actually see the bottom first so it doesn't come apart. Then I untwist the fibres. So you create like a, uh, a vase of uh, rope fibres. Um, once that's pretty much set and you're happy with the rough shape it is, I apply some 12 mil static grass. Same as what Boomer does, same as what Gormo does. And then I airbrush that, you know, a grey-brown colour to give it a woody look. To that I just add uh, some of the flocking, which is uh, knock leaves you know, or a bit of other finer flocking from Woodland Scenics or one of the other scenic suppliers. The tree you see there on the, on the left of the screen, it is done the same way. Now that is sizal rope, but it's cut to about four and a half inches. Again, I secure the bottom with a bit of CA, move up, undo some of the, uh, the twine to form some of the branches. You can just see in the corner of the screen there, it breaks into two, one there and one there, so a double, double trunk there. So once that's been separated, I CA that once again, work my way up, opening up the, uh, the twine to create the finer branches. Once I'm happy with that and it's all sort of C8 into place and I know the shape I've got and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it, I go and apply the uh, 12 mil static grass once again, which is just sprinkled on with a bit of a P, uh, PVA or wood glue, carpenter's glue. Again, that is spray painted a brownie grey colour again. And once that's dry, I paint the whole trunks with PVA and I apply a fine sawdust. Uh, I think I use like an MDF sawdust. I know it's not good for your health, but you know, you do all this outside. Once that's uh, secured down onto the tree, I just give it a bit of a, a dry brush with um, some, some paints anyway. Happy with that, I go ahead and apply the foliage, which is again, knock leaves and what have you. So um, that's that's the tree. There's, there's actually two trees. There's another tree a bit further around to the, to the left here smaller tree and it just helps break up that scene creates a nice little uh, uh bit of bit of a bush corridor yeah so look we're going to move on to another scene actually before we go on to a, to the next scene i'll talk about the added details that i've got down the through the front here so the tires which i've used elsewhere on the layout are from juila uh, there's a little bit of timber in here behind the grasses here which is basically balsa wood that's been sliced and spliced up into small lengths uh, it's been painted grey, then uh, I just dry brush it with a bit of a few whites and browns and what have you. The witch's hat here is from Mini Prints again, and to the right of that, I've got the 
ricks or pike stuff, uh, highway barriers, which I actually cut down to down to ten feet lengths, and uh, paint weather them. You know, even chip the top of them across the across here to make them look worn out and weathered and what have you. In front of that, more tyres, and a friend of mine, Philip, down in Victoria, sent me up some 3D printed truck batteries, which I've dumped in behind there. I painted them up black, uh, touched up a few sides, you know, different colours and what have you. Then, uh, basically, the tops of them where the terminals are, I just painted a piece of paper with a bit of silver paint, turned them upside down, pressed it on, and that just was... That was just enough paint there to highlight the actual terminals on top of the battery. So thanks, Phil, for them. They, they look great on the layout. Now I'm going to move on to the uh, next building, which is to the right of this. So just bear with me for a moment, and I'll move the camera, and we'll take a look. So here we are with the finished flat. As you can see, it, uh, it's had the roller doors added, a personnel door, an awning, uh, conduits, uh, an awning over the one of the doors anyway and I've made up a couple of small boxes that you probably can't see there but I'll post up a photograph anyway that uh, that the uh, workers there sit on while having a lunch break now the fence now the fence is made exactly the same as what I've made on the other building it's just been rusted up a bit more a bit heavier here um, you can see one, two windows here have been filled in and the way I've done that and gave the rough look is basically mask the area off and put a very thin skim of the fibre paste, fibre gel over the top. Um, just let that cure overnight then basically painted it that dirty concrete grey colour. I do have to detail some of the interior in through here and I'm just going to fill it up with pallets and drums and any other thing that I could uh, I can basically get my hands on that I can find. Um, have been building a few pallets. They're all scratch built as you can see there. They're all made out of evergreen styrene. A um, few of them, they're great for the uh, the backgrounds and all that. They're probably not as detailed as some of the ones that you can actually purchase from some of the suppliers but um look once they're painted weathered up and all that and they're stacked in in, in scenes you know perhaps a whole pile against this fence over here near the vine um maybe across through here i think i think they'll look the part so simple little structures again one eighth of an inch uh gray board or book binding board um the the fence Again, evergreen styrene with the chill on top, and over here, even the gate. Now, I've made the gate out of uh, evergreen styrene uh, rod, just bent it all up, put a little uh, pad bolt on the side here, so that that's all complete. Um, that area is almost complete. You could say it's 98% complete now, so uh, I'm happy with the way this, this corner has actually been transformed from having nothing in there you know, oh, just over a month ago to, to actually creating a scene that's not rail served but it actually forms part of the actual landscape you could say and uh, it's not really out, out of uh, out of the ordinary to see such things like this especially down on the Miami downtown line um, again a lot of this a lot of these buildings I should say that you, this and Hutchison Engineering over the other side there is uh, lifted from uh, Google Maps anyway, which uh, yeah, great source for inspiration. So what else have I been up to on the layout? Well, not too much really. Uh, it is the Easter weekend here in Sydney, and uh, I've had, I've had a very quiet weekend with my boys. Um, I did have to work Saturday, Sunday, and this morning, which is Monday, Easter Monday. But uh, otherwise, I've just been catching up on on Facebook and. Uh, a few other videos and uh, watched a really good video the other day or a Heath from Humanity Junction I think it is and uh, about car cards and way builds and all that which I found found really interesting because uh, that's why I think I'll operate this layout in the future anyway we might get a train rolling through the scene and uh, that might be it for this this month actually there is one thing I'll uh, that I'll be going on with shortly and uh, 
I'll just uh, move the camera once again and uh, we'll have a look at the area that I'm going to transform next. Okay, we've got the camera refocused now. And this is the area behind this long chain link fence here that I want to do something about. Now, I've uh, taken a few more ideas from Google Maps and I've come up with the idea of a basically a storage yard. Uh, throughout the area I will be adding a few uh, shipping containers and what have you but also more piles of pallets and things something that you'll find in, in, in these sort of areas so you imagine you know one or two shipping containers stored in through here I know that's on an angle there but uh, I will eventually you know, level that area out, or maybe build a small concrete retaining wall. So that's actually sitting upright there behind the fence, and uh, in between the fence and the containers itself, it can be full of trash and weeds and rubbish and what have you. That is one area that really requires something. You know, I just can't leave a open scene there like that. Um... All right, I think it's time to get a train running. So uh, we might actually turn the camera around and film a train coming out from uh, Miami Produce onto the main. Yeah, why not? Let's do that.